near mint condition, the home of collected oh, edition. That cover is so awesome. This is Mr. Chris Claremont. A legend. Melanie goes, Pizza <gasps> Happy Monday, all you minties. Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition, the home of collected editions. And join me today for your advanced look at the Hulk Maestro by Peter David Omnibus from Marvel Comics. I'm going to be talking about what is collected in here, as well as who Maestro is for people wondering. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. So here we have Hulk Maestro. This is the Peter David collection. Even though Peter David doesn't write every one of these issues, and I'll explain which ones they are here in a second. Uh, before going any further, though, thank you to David Gabriel and the fine folks at Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this omnibus. This omnibus is due out in the direct market and book market on September 19th or 20th, depending on where you get your books. What we're looking at here is the direct market cover. This is the one that's supplied by the legendary George Pettis. On the left-hand side is your standard edition cover, the one that's going to be available everywhere. That one's supplied by Greg Land. And if I had to choose between both of them, I had to go with the one that, of course, reminded me of my childhood, the one that I was first lured to because of that wonderful artwork by George Pettis. And it's the story that introduced us to Maestro. But that Greg Land Maestro cover is so freaking awesome with just the character on top of all of the trophies. It's an awesome image. And of course, the spines have a different image on them. Everything else underneath the dust jacket is the same. So let's go ahead and shift the focus back to this. So here we have Hulk Maestro and this image right here from Future Imperfect by Peter David, Keon, Lan, Peralta, Perez, and Pina. And then the Marvel logo. The spine of the book again, taking a closer look. Hulk Maestro, the Marvel Omnibus up there by Peter David. And again, those names, Keon, Lan, Peralta, Perez, and Pina. And then that image of Maestro. And then the back of the book showcasing the covers. Not all of them, but most of the covers that are collected in this particular book. The ISBN down there and the book retailing for $125. And if you're wondering where I'm putting my copy of Hulk Maestro, it'll go right after volume five of The Incredible Hulk by Peter David. That's where I'm keeping it. Underneath the dust jacket, I'm sure most of you that have read Future and Perfect know what that is. Uh, but here is what the flaps look like. Meet Maestro and then a little bit about the creators over here. Okay, let's take a closer look at the trophy room i am so glad they used this as the art on board this is such an iconic moment it's a beautiful image from future imperfect and as a kid i would go here and try to figure out which one of these trophies belong to what character and we'll talk a little bit more about that when we open up the book because uh, you know in case people don't even want to know what uh the trophy room is now speaking of talking about the book when i open this up I do have to talk about Future Imperfect, and I have to talk about who Maestro is, because I can't talk about the rest of the book without talking about Maestro. I'm not going to give the ending away of Future Imperfect, but I am going to talk about it heavily in case you haven't read it, um, because, like I said, in order for me to talk about the rest of the book, I have to talk about who the character is. Now, if you're wondering if some of this stuff has been collected previously, yes, it does double dip a little bit with the Hulk Omnis uh, by Peter David. So some of the stories have been collected previously, but it does have new stories in here. And I'll explain which ones those are as we open it up. All right, the spoiler tags went up. So that means anybody that doesn't want spoilers can head to the part where I talk about the build of the book. But everyone else, let's go ahead and crack this sucker open. Okay, here we go. We'll talk about the trophy room in a little bit. And there we have some green end pages. And Hulk Maestro by Peter David. Again, this Greg Land image. Here is the credit page on the left. And on the right, 
breaking down each of the issues that are collected in here, or rather the story arcs that are collected in here. Peter David writing most of the stuff in here. However, there are a couple of other writers, like the Exiles writer was Tony Bedard, Ivan Velez doing the Abominations miniseries, and we kick it off with Future Imperfect number one. So the contents of this particular omnibus are Hulk Future Imperfect 1 and 2, Incredible Hulk 460 and 461, Captain Marvel 27 through 30. Now that's the 1999, the Genesis Vell era of Captain Marvel. Spider-Man 2099, 9 through 10. That's the 2014 <laughs> Spider-Man 2099. And then Future Imperfect, that's the Secret Wars Battle Worlds, Future Imperfect 1 through 5 miniseries. Maestro 1 through 5, Maestro War and Pax 1 through 5, Maestro World War M 1 through 5, Exile 79 and 80, and then Abominations 1 through 3. Um, so, as I mentioned, I'm going to have to talk about Future Imperfect, but really quick, uh, right here there's a note that says, This collection portrays characters dealing with sexual assault. Reader discretion is advised. Now, I know things like those little notes bother some people, but as I've always said on my channel, I don't care. They can put a warning or a sticker on a book as long as it's printed the way that it was when it originally came out. That's what I want. Holy crap crap look at this amazing double page spread i'm sure i talked about it when i did my overview of the hulk omnibus by peter david that had future imperfect collected in it but it is just how did one man accomplish this this it, it's insane so george Pérez and peter david team up for this particular story this is the future imperfect story it's only two issues that introduces us to this world that's about a hundred years into the future and we meet a group of four characters here these are known as the freedom fighters they're all being led by their commanding officer janice who's this really young girl uh there's also scooter and <laughs> the guy that cracks me up with piss fist i think is his name and then this is uh Decord, who doesn't make it and honestly these names aren't important but i mean there are some nice flashbacks to these characters later on in the future series or mini series and what they're fighting against is this tyrant that is taking over this world 100 years in the future he has his wars of dogs out there or war dogs and his gravity police that are just making sure that everybody is abiding by the rules not getting too much food getting the right amount of food and paying their dues and these freedom fighters oppose that now they're all being led by somebody that i'll explain here in a little bit uh only janice escapes along with i think actually scooter ends up escaping too now when they're escaping this sh shadow comes out of his wrecking building and it is, of course, The Incredible Hulk. Now, it's very important to note that during this time of Peter David's run of The Incredible Hulk, this is Smart Hulk. This is what some people call Professor Hulk. It is Strong Hulk, but he's got the brain of Bruce Banner in there so he can speak like this. He can talk. Uh, he's not like Hulk smash. Not like that. Uh, but he's also not MCU Professor Hulk by any means. This guy's a lot more charming and a lot more likable than that character. So he just cuts loose and starts breaking things and wrecking all kinds of things. And you're probably wondering, wait a minute, what is the Hulk doing in the future? Nothing is being explained yet. Well, we'll get there, I promise. Then we get to see this tyrant that everybody's been talking about. Everybody's paying their dues to this creature known as Maestro. And he comes out of the curtain, you can see these ladies that he's been with. He's an older guy. He's got all these warts are on his body. And he's wearing some kind of chain, some kind of gold bracelets. So this is the guy that has been ruling in this future, in this city known as Dystopia. So the Hulk finds Janice. And here is where you get a little bit of the background story as how the Hulk ended up coming to the future and why. But not before Janice takes him to an underground city. She explains a little bit of how the people are living and how they escape from all these um, gravity police and war dogs through all these tunnels. This is a really cool part right here where she's showing, it's like a memory gem of everything in Bruce Banner's life. It's almost like a projector, if you will, of all the memories. And that's how, honestly, they share stories too in this particular future. 
And then she wants him to meet their leader. Because even though she's the commanding officer, Janice isn't really the one that's leading them. This guy in Professor Xavier's chair is their leader. Oh my gosh. Okay. When I was a kid, this blew me away. I'm like, oh my gosh. That's Wolverine's adamantium bones. That's the beast. Like somebody actually hung up his fur. That's messed up. Warlocks with vision over here. Titanium man's helmet. Nova's. Like I was going through all of these. Like this big nerd. And to this day, I still... I find a lot of joy in things like this, and I and I still try to figure out little things like what's over here next to Red Skull. Is that the Bottle City? Is that a a little thing that George Perez snuck in from the Distinguished Competition? And I mean, there's all kinds of things. Later on in the miniseries that you'll see, you're gonna see other angles of this particular room. Uh, but I love the dead again. There's another joke here uh, when we look at the ashes. So as it turns out, this old man, this very old guy that's sitting in Professor Xavier's chair, turns out to be none other than his best friend in present day, our present day, Rick Jones. So why did Rick Jones summon him? Well, one of the captured freedom fighters, this is a uh, Fisp. What's his name? Piss Whiz? Uh, no, Fisp Piss. Oh my gosh, it's a horrible name. Pissfist, that's his name. So Pissfist is captured, and because we are living in this future, Maestro is able to get all the memories out that he needs from him. Even though Pissfist knows Maestro is going to get memories out of him, so he's trying to get him to kill him. So he spits in his eye, and he almost does it. This concubine right here looks like she's dressed like Red Sonia. I never noticed that. So through these memories, we see that they traveled back in time, this group of uh, freedom fighters traveled back in time to go and see Rick Jones because they have to talk Rick Jones into talking the Hulk into coming to the future and fighting Maestro for them. And this is all the plan of future Rick Jones who found Dr. Doom's time traveling machine. And that's how they're able to time travel back to get Hulk come to the future and destroy Maestro. Because Rick Jones asked. Now, this is where Hulk finds out exactly what happened. And in detail, it's you find out a lot more later. How the world pretty much ruined itself. We were heroes and we fought villains. And all that time we thought the villains were going to destroy us. Humanity destroyed itself. We went to nuclear war. And there were hardly any superheroes that survived. So Bruce is asking, who survived? What, what? How did you live? And there's a couple of things that are answered and some go unanswered. But he's asking about Betty, right? He's like, you're here. Where is Betty, my wife? And he shows him where Betty is. Betty Banner's over here. The ashes of her. Right next to the leader. Right behind Jean Grave. <laughs> it says again. Um, it's a nice little note. But he wants to know who Maestro is. And Rick Jones is like, you already know the answer. And of course, I'm sure, if you know, most people that see this, I just don't like spoiling things for people, but most people that have read The Incredible Hulk, uh, even new readers, have heard about Maestro, and most people probably see him as like a future version of the Hulk. It's really no surprise, and, and it really isn't, but I just wanted to play it safe. Uh, but yes, it is the future version of the Hulk that has turned into this tyrant that this overlord that is just being so cruel to people and just being so selfish has the brains of bruce banner and the strength and i mean immense strength of the hulk and that's where chapter one ends and then chapter two i don't want to talk about the ending but i do want to show you this amazing fight because maestro knows that he's stronger than hulk because he has been living in this future where he's just been exposed to more and more gamma radiation because after nuclear war, that's why dystopia is so important, the rest of the world is just radiation. And it's, it's some people are trying to go back out there to try to find more people that are alive in this world. Uh, but that radiation he's been absorbing. And this is so cruel. Like He knows what his past self is it thinks like so he picks up this young lady and he's like i'm gonna rip her in half and the hulk's like go ahead i don't know her she's from the future and he's like oh yeah well then i'm gonna do it and then you know our hulk is like no and he's like ha, ha, you're so predictable because he knows what his past self would do now the really interesting thing because i'm sure people are wondering well how in the world is 
past Hulk here fighting future Hulk and none of them remembering this happening. That is actually explained, and I'm not going to spoil how it's explained, uh, but that question is asked. Now, Maestro knows that Hulk has in a super fast healing factor, and he breaks his neck, and what he does next is so messed up. He wants to torture him. He wants to break the Hulk, and he sends in this young lady who looks like Betty, and she keeps saying, please call me Betty, and that's what Maestro wants to do. He wants to break him. Now, there is one more amazing fight that happens, but I'm not going to go any much further than this. You can find out how this ends, how Hulk is finally, if he is, able to defeat Maestro. But this explains how the first two met and the first appearance of this character. And once it ends, it, there's a little bit of uh, story here from Broken Worlds. And this is just material from Broken Worlds number one, which I put in the little caption box that popped up. It's just material from this and then material from Secret Wars Battle World number four. But once you read Future Imperfect, you may be asking, what happened to Captain America's shield? Well, this answers that question. <laughs> That's all I will say about it. Next up is the Hulk 460 and 461 story. This is a really interesting story to collect in here because this is the return of Bruce Banner back to the Marvel Universe when he was in the Heroes Reborn Universe over at Image Comics. So he's not alone. Uh, he brings back other things with him. And one of those things may be Maestro. Of course, it's collected in here for a reason. Uh, then we get the Captain Marvel stories where we are introduced to this character named Thanatos. And Thanatos takes Captain Marvel, Spider-Man 2099, and Rick Jones into this future, or in Star Fox too, into this future where Maestro rules supreme. And that's how the four of them end up meeting. And you see some returning characters like Janice there. I never did say Janice is named after Janice Joplin because she turns out to be Rick Jones' granddaughter. So of course he named her after a musician. Uh, here we have Spider-Man 2099 going back to the world of the maestro uh, because he had been there already in the Captain Marvel stories. Again, it helps that Peter David wrote all these stories. So he's like, oh yeah, I'll just do that. Um, now, this will be collected in Spider-Man 2099 Volume 2 Omnibus. The Captain Marvel story will be collected in the Captain Marvel Omnibus. And then, of course, the Incredible Hulk Om Omni has Future Imperfect. And then Volume 4 has Incredible Hulk 460 and 461. In case you're wondering about double dipping. Now, the next stories I'm going to talk about have not been collected in any Omnis. And that is the Battle World's Future Imperfect. This is a really interesting story because... I want to say it's the most unique one out of the others that are collected in here because this isn't really the maestro that we met at the very beginning. This is a battle world. This is another world maestro. And it's cool, though, because it's Peter David writing the character, Greg Land, uh, drawing this particular story. We meet this character right here, Ruby. I'll just won't say her last name, who picks up this old man in the desert. And she's like, oh, my gosh, you're Odin. And turns out, no, it's not Odin. It's maestro. And... He's fighting the leader of the Rebellion in this particular version of Future Imperfect. The leader of the Rebellion is uh, the Thing. But it's not Ben Grimm. It's somebody else. And, oh my gosh, I love that Layla Miller shows up through here. And she's trying to set things straight. Keep in mind, this is during Secret Wars. So, these small little pocket universes are aware of Doctor Doom being in charge of all of Secret Wars. So, Maestro wants to take over because that's just who he is. And he has ideas for the destroyer armor then we get to the meat and potatoes of this collection so so far the stories collected in here have been mapped in publishing order there are two exceptions that i'll talk about but first we need to talk about maestro so maestro was a mini series that showed us how bruce ended up becoming maestro how our hulk became this tyrant, this ruler, how he just gave up on humanity. And it is such a good story. Like, if you've not read this, I don't care if you don't buy Omnis. Go and find that first trade paperback. It's not called, um, what is it called? It's not just called Maestro. It's called Maestro Symphony in a Gamma Key. That's what it's called. It's a trade paperback. And 
Oh, it's so good. It's so good because you meet the Hulk. You know, he just got finished fighting a bunch of Sentinels with the Avengers. He goes back home to eat dinner with his wife and kids. He's happily married. Captain America shows up. And he's like, hey, Bruce, we need to talk. And he's just freaking out because something's off. Something's off with Betty. Something's off with the kids. And as it turns out, he's just been living in a simulation He's been living in a simulation for years when he realizes that everyone he loves is dead. Keep in mind, this is the journey of how Hulk becomes Maestro. So he realizes he's waking up, everything is a lie, and he wants to know who's behind everything. And that is MODOK, the mental organism designed only for killing. And this is where you get a really in-depth history on what happened to this world how we destroyed each other how just this nuclear war broke out and the hulk refuses to you stay put he's like no there's a whole world out there surely we can't be the only ones and he ends up finding um who was it machine man and machine man tells him oh yeah there's this city called dystopia that wasn't really affected it's got barriers that keeps the radiation out but there's a tyrant a ruler over dystopia his name is Maestro. Now I'll let you find out who that is. But I do love this. And Maestro means master in Italian. And Hulk is like, I know, I'm, I'm smart. This is Professor Hulk, remember? Super smart guy and strength of the Hulk. But anyway, uh, for people that didn't know. So that series leads into the next series. And this starts going into chronological order. You get to see how that Hulk eventually took over the city. And then, of course, how he just decides to take out every piece of humanity because he's kind of lost hope he thinks that without him ruling over humans we're just going to end up killing each other uh, just because of the lesson that he learned how we ended up killing each other to begin with how humanity was fighting in this big nuclear war you know mean meaning that the superheroes and their fights absolutely meant nothing to them so that leads into this big fight with some other characters you may be familiar with in Peter David's run. You don't need to have read that run to enjoy uh, the stories, though. And then the final miniseries that's collected in here, or as far as the Maestro miniseries, is the uh, House of, or no World War M, which another story just showcasing how Hulk or Maestro now, as he's having people call him is going to rule over this future by taking out the remaining superheroes as well as taking out the armed forces. And it's so solid how we go, you know, from happy married Hulk eating dinner with his family to I'm going to rip everything apart Hulk. And it is just phenomenal how the story just progresses. And Peter David just keeps adding these things. Now, if you're wondering, is there another Maestro miniseries they could add in here later if they ever reprint this? I mean, yeah, of course, but this does tie nicely in with Future Imperfect. I don't see the need for another Maestro miniseries after this one. Now, what else is collected in here? Because I mentioned things are collected in publishing order. And these two are the exception with Exiles, which was not written by Peter David. So this is the story of the Exiles who were... Think Quantum Leap with mutants. I love this stuff, and hopefully one day we'll have omnis of this. And anytime I see these in, in these type of collections, or the Squadron Supreme Omnibus collections, I hope one day that Marvel gives us some Exiles omnis. But they just travel through different worlds, trying to make things right. Uh, this time around, it's got this character, Hulk 2099. And, well, is it really Hulk 2099? And they end up going to the world of Future Imperfect. And then the next story that's collected in here is The Abominations. And The Abominations has never been collected in anything. And The Abominations is a three-issue miniseries. Uh, Angel Medina supplying the artwork here, by the way. Uh, Ivan Velez is the writer. But this takes place a few weeks after the ending of Future Imperfect, issue number two. That's where this takes place. And I can't talk about this too much because it would give away what happens at the end but let it just be known that the abomination this future abomination has heard about dystopia and he, him and his mutates want to go and explore dystopia and try to take it over because that's what he does now all the way 
So let's welcome everybody that did not want any kind of spoilers. We have some Marvel Age covers right here by George Pettis, the cover to the trade paperback, the Incredible Hulk uh, forward by Bobby Chase, who was the editor at the time, George Pettis afterward for the trade, limited edition hardcover forward. So different forwards and afterwards for the different, very many different variations of the collections. And then more trade paperback covers. This is the Future and Perfect Marvel Tales cover by Hugh Lee. Uh, this is an introduction by Ralph Macchio. Yes, I was hoping they'd collect this. This is the Easter egg um, or the the glossary pretty much for the trophy room. I love that they collected it. So in case you don't know or wondering who some of these, still no bottle though. What was that bottle next to the Red Skull's cap or skull? Original artwork. And here it is in the inked pages right here. Who's Dan? Who owns this? Oh, you're so lucky. And then original art. And the connecting covers to Captain Marvel 27 through 30. This is a beautiful tribute to George Pettis, who was still alive when Peter David wrote this. But just talking about the importance and how just things happen for a reason. Uh, somebody else was supposed to work on the artwork duties of Future and Perfect. But in the end, they decided to give it to George Pettis because the other artist... And it doesn't matter. Like, even he wrote that. He's like, And it doesn't matter who the other artist was supposed to be. In the end, George Perez was the artist. Ah, gone too soon for sure. Future Imperfect variant here. So here's where all the variants are. And like I always tell people, some of these variants are just variants, right? That is an awesome variant. And I've always been a fan of that one. It's a take on his incredible Hulk by Mike Deltado. Yeah, I like these homage covers. They're cool. Tony Moore, Becky Cloonan, Ryan Otley. Ryan Stegman, Ed McGinnis, just to name a few of the artists back here. It's an awesome one, but another phenomenal artist gone way too soon, Carlos Pacheco. Sanford Green. So yes, these are the variant covers, and they're textless covers with this frame, this frame of dystopia around it. And then some character designs by Herman Peralta. So that, that is one thing I didn't uh, point out. Like, I talked about George Perez, and I think this happens from time to time. Like, Greg Land does the artwork for the Battle World story. Uh, the backup story for this right here, for the first Maestro series, was done by Del Kion. But that's the flashback. He only does that. And then Javier Piña and Herban Peralta do the rest of the series. And they're solid artists. There's also backup stories there, too, explaining how kind of the world came to be. Uh, in the second series, the, the uh, what is this, the World War M, this is um, some artwork in here by Herman Peralta, as well as uh, Pascual Ferry, I think, doing some of the stuff in here. Now, let's take a look at the binding. So here we have 960 pages sewn binding. This one printed at the iMac printer. And I'm sure you probably saw the way that this laid over. It's got this end sheet right here that keeps wanting to close it. Um, but let's look at the trophy room again, because that's a good idea of how the book lays over. There we go. And this, of course, being towards the very beginning. So you do get some minimal gutter loss. So that's something to keep in mind. You got to hold it down to see the Billy Club right there. Daredevil's Billy Club. And let's talk about... Yeah, here we go. Honestly, the paper stock is pretty thick on this one compared to other iMac printers, but uh, really every one is so different. So as far as the paper stock, you do get s maybe some bleed through. Here we go. Some bleed through from the opposite page if it's light colors or if it's whites, just to kind of give you a heads up and being as thorough as I can be. But that's it. That, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this omnibus, don't forget to check out our sponsors. If you're in Europe and you're interested in buying these books, definitely check out Walt's Comic Shop in Berlin, Germany. They have the cheapest pre-order prices, flat shipping rate of 12 euros for all EU countries, emails answer within 24 hours, waltzcomicshop.com, and you can use the code near mint condition at checkout and get free shipping for all EU countries with your first order over 40 euros. That's Walt's Comic Shop, your reliable source for omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. Ding! CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. 
They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this omnibus. Let me know in the comments down below if you are picking this up, or if you're just sticking to the Peter David Hulk Omnibus editions, or if you're going to pick up the Epic Collections. And if you have read the stories of Maestro, let me know which one of the miniseries is your favorite, or do you still just love the original Future Imperfect? But that was it for me. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications. Check out our Patreon and spread shop amazing ways to support the channel if you can do so. More importantly, everyone stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.